Hello everyone and welcome to Hockey Hub. I'm Brennan and today we're looking at all of the recent signings within the past few weeks in the NHL. Uh, now I've been saving up this video for a while because it's kind of difficult to make as there's, you know, signings coming out every day. So I'm sure by the time that this video is posted, I'm going to probably miss a few signings that have happened since it's been uh, filmed and edited and then uploaded. Uh, so, you know, forgive me for that because there's probably going to be a few notable signings uh, that don't get put into this video. Uh, but, you know, I do got a lot to unpackage here. So we're going to start off with uh, the signings uh, that some of these teams have made. Now starting off with the reason why I'm wearing this brand new uh, Montreal Reverse Retro jersey is uh, that the Michael Froelich has signed with the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, now I do think that this is a good pickup for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, Michael Froelich is probably just a fourth liner or maybe a depth uh, forward at this point, but I do think that this is more depth and good depth uh, when it comes to the upcoming season. Uh, I think that, you know, teams with a lot of depth are probably going to actually end up having good seasons because, you know, we're going to see guys that get injured uh, over a condensed schedule. We're going to see, you know, positive COVID cases that's going to take a lot of guys out of the lineup. So having good depth that can step in and can provide offense and uh, Froelich brings a good two-way game is important as well. So I do like uh, signing Froelich for the Montreal Canadiens. But then Nashville ended up signing uh, a few key guys. Uh, they ended up bringing back uh, Mikel Granlund uh, to a one year year $3.75 million contract. Uh, now I thought that this was kind of an interesting move for the Nashville Predators. Uh, I didn't think that they were going to end up bringing back Randland since he really hasn't fit in well in Nashville at all. And I think that's kind of a result of the whole COVID landscape. Uh, playing in Nashville is probably a more comfortable environment for Granlund since he has experience there. So it does make sense on some level why they chose to bring him back and he does help fill a hole in their top six. Uh, now another forward that the Nashville Predators signed is Eric Holla. They signed him to a one year $1.75 million contract and I think that that is a very good deal for the Nashville Predators. Hall is still a good probably third line center at this point in his career. He has struggled with injuries but when he's healthy he can provide some good offense along with a strong defensive game for a centerman. Uh, so I do think that that's a very good contract. You know there's no risk in it at, at all with just it being one year. So this is a very good contract and is probably one of the best signings of the free agency period. Connor Sheary has signed a one-year deal with the Washington Capitals for 750 k uh, I think that this is another low-risk, high-reward contract. Sheary has been a good middle six forward for most of his career and probably slots in there in that third line in Washington. It helps out their forward depth and adds a little bit of a scoring boost, and I think that this is a very smart uh, pickup for a team that's pretty close to the cap in the Washington Capitals, uh, so I do think that that's a very good pickup for them. They also ended up signing Craig Anderson to a professional tryout. Uh, you know, this came after the news that Henrik, uh, Henrik Lundqvist isn't going to be playing the uh, upcoming season and is actually scheduled to have open heart surgery. Uh, so I do think that this makes a lot of sense for the Washington Capitals to bring in Craig Anderson on a PTO. Another PTO we saw is actually Mike Hoffman to the St. Louis Blues. Now it's rumored that Hoffman has a one year deal in place with St. Louis for around $4 million a year, uh, but it's rare that we ever see a top end free agent like Hoffman sign a professional tryout. I think it's just so that St. Louis can get their salary cap in order and this allows Hoffman to still train and practice with the team. Uh, but that being said, it's definitely an interesting situation. I fully expect Hoffman to sign in St. Louis now uh, for you know what's been rumored as yeah, one year $4 million deal or somewhere around then. So when they get Tarasenko and Steen put on the LTIR, they're probably going to end up signing Hoffman to an actual contract and probably signing Vince Dunn as well. Uh, so I think that this is a very good pickup for the St. Louis Blues. He should replace the goal totals for Tarasenko. Uh, Tarasenko isn't exactly, uh, you know, probably a 40-50 goal guy at this point in his career anymore. I don't know how much longer Tarasenko has left to play. He's always getting injured and his shoulders are so bad at this point that I'm not sure. So bringing in Hoffman should be a good replacement just to replace the goal scoring. I don't necessarily think that the assists are going to be there. Uh, but you can expect, you know, the equivalent of 30 goals uh, from Hoffman over a 56-game schedule. Slater Cuckoo has signed a one-year $850,000 deal with the Edmonton Oilers. I think that this signing is a result of the fact that Oscar Clefbaum is going to be out for the entirety of the regular season and probably even the playoffs. Uh, he might actually end up missing time in next season, like the season after as well. Uh, so I think that this is to give them probably a seventh defenseman to work with. I imagine that they've already got their top six set. Uh, you know, bringing in Barry to replace Clefbaum's offense was a smart move. And now that uh, Cuckoo is probably just going to be a seventh defense role. I I imagine that he's probably still going to get around 25 games in because we're going to see injuries, we're going to see positive COVID cases, or guys are going to be taken out of the lineup because they're not performing well. So this is a good depth pickup for the Edmonton Oilers. 
Uh, now, the LA Kings have also signed Andreas Anthonisiu, who, who is a former Edmonton Oiler. I think that this is a good pickup for uh, the Los Angeles Kings, a very low-risk uh, move for Los Angeles. Anthonisiu really had a terrible year this past year. Uh, he was one of the worst defensive players in the NHL. I understand that he's counted on for offense. He is a forward, after all. But that being said, there's virtually no defense to his game whatsoever. It's all offense, and it's not like he provided a lot of offense. A lot of people expected him to break out alongside Connor McDavid, but it never really happened. Uh, only scored one goal with the Edmonton Oilers, and despite the fact that he's only one year removed from a 30-goal season, there's questions about whether or not he's going to be able to get back to that level. I do think that, the, uh, that he is a good fit for LA, though. He does uh, definitely inject some youth and some speed into the lineup, which they desperately need right now, despite all their young prospects. And Corey Perry has signed a one-year $750,000 deal with the Montreal Canadiens as well. Uh, this is an, uh, another depth pickup that I like for the Montreal Canadiens. I think Perry is going to provide experience, uh, grit, and, you know, might be able to put home about, you know, between 5 and 10 goals. Uh, Perry actually had a very good playoff for the Dallas Stars, scoring 5 goals and obviously a very key goal in the Stanley Cup Finals against the Tampa Bay Lightning. So, uh, I think Perry is a guy that I've wanted Montreal to pick up this offseason. I don't expect him to play play a regular role in the lineup, but I think that he definitely helps out Montreal's depth. And if you look at their forward depth now, they probably have the best, you know, simply depth in Canada. I understand that they don't have the star power of a team like Toronto or Edmonton or Winnipeg, uh, but that being said, their overall lineup depth, like Corey Perry and Michael Froley, uh, don't exactly slot in as guys that are going to play every night. And I think that speaks a lot to the depth of this team, because Perry is still a serviceable NHL player, and so is Froelich. I understand that Perry is a very disliked player within the NHL community, and I fully get that. I'm not personally a fan of his game. I think that he is a dirty player and a little bit of a rat, but that being said, he can still stick up for his teammates and provides a lot, and I think as a Montreal fan, I am going to enjoy having Perry in the lineup uh, because of those things he provides, the intangibles that don't get talked about a lot. So I think that that was a very smart signing for the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, now, this is more of a rumored signing, but apparently Derek Broussard has a contract in place with the Arizona Coyotes. I think that this makes a lot of sense for Arizona, considering they traded away Derek Stepan. Uh, now, I think Broussard is going to be able to kind of replace that level of scoring that Stepan brings. Uh, and I understand that Broussard doesn't have uh, as strong of a two-way game as Stepan does. Uh, but that being said, you know, there's defense isn't necessarily the problem in Arizona. It's the lack of scoring, and I think Broussard is going to be able to provide a little bit of a scoring punch if they do end up signing him, which is pretty much all but can confirmed right now. But getting into the restricted free agents that have signed contracts. Uh, now, Ethan Bear, the Edmonton Oilers, was recently signed to a $2 million a year for two-year contract. I think that this is a very good contract for the Edmonton Oilers. Ethan Bear was a top-pairing guy for them this past season and was arguably their best defenseman. I think that Bear has true top-four upside and should be a very key piece for the Edmonton Oilers moving forward. So to get him for $2 million a year is really good. He probably would have got a lot more if it wasn't for COVID, but, you know, considering uh, the flat salary cap, uh, it makes sense why he only got $2 million Million, but I think this is a very good value deal for the Edmonton Oilers right now. Mackenzie Blackwood also signed an extension with the New Jersey Devils for three years at $2.8 million a year. This is a great contract for New Jersey. Blackwood is one of the best up-and-coming young goaltenders in the NHL. He had a great season this past year. His numbers were actually comparable to Carter Hart, playing for a much worse team than Hart does. Uh, so I think that this is a great contract. Uh, he is a restricted free agent at the end of it, so they still do retain his rights, I believe. Uh, so that's good for New Jersey. And for right now, getting Blackwood at $2.8 million a year is an absolute steal and is arguably one of the best value contracts in the NHL for a goaltender. The Tampa Bay Lightning have also done some work with the restricted free agents as well. Uh, they signed Anthony Sorelli to a three-year $4.8 million a year contract. I don't get how Tampa does it. They, you know, if Sorelli was playing in Montreal or Toronto, he's probably a six or seven million dollar a year player. Uh, but playing in Tampa Bay, he only gets 4.8 million. I, and I understand that, you know, Florida and Tampa is a tax-free state. Uh, but that being said, this is still a great contract. It's probably still one of the, I, I'm sure Sorelli still took a discount, you know, to keep the core together. They are Stanley Cup champion after all. Uh, but still, 4.8 million a year for what Sorelli provides is insane. Uh, Sorelli was one of the best defensive centers in the NHL this past season. He's so young and he's got so much offensive upside and probably projects as that second line center of the future. This is a great signing for the Tampa Bay Lightning.
And for the last signing I have of this video is Eric Chernak from the Tampa Bay Lightning as well. Now Chernak signed a 2.8 or 2.9 million, I think it is, uh, you know, per year for three years. Once again, another really good contract. Chernak was one of the best uh, defensive defensemen on the Tampa Bay Lightning this past season. Still really young, a lot of uh, upside there. Not necessarily a lot of offense with Chernak, but that's not what you're looking for. He brings a strong physical game along with very good defensive awareness and is a very key piece in that top four for the Tampa Bay Lightning. So getting him under, uh, you know, a really good contract bodes well for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Uh, obviously, they are kind of in cap hell right now, but with all the money that they're going to be able to put on the long-term injury reserve, uh, they should actually be able to squeak under the cap, uh, which is very impressive. Julian Breezeball has done a masterful job getting these guys signed and keeping this core together without having to give up a lot. Uh, so he's done some really good work, and we see that with you know these two uh, contracts of Sorelli and Chernock. There is still some restricted free agents sitting out there like Matthew Barzell and Pierre-Luc Dubois. Uh, I do expect those guys to sign soon with my luck they'll probably sign in between this video being made and uploaded and i'll look like a fool for not talking about it so this is kind of the disclaimer that if they get signed uh you know at the time this video was made they weren't signed yet so uh i do expect those guys to get signed a contract soon though barzell and the islanders are talking every day uh, but not necessarily a lot of traction, which is kind of concerning, but they do expect him to be there for training camp. Uh, and there is some unrestricted free agents still in the market as well. We're all kind of awaiting to see what happens with Zdeno Chara, whether or not he comes back for another year, and if he does, it will probably be with the Boston Bruins, but there's still some good unrestricted free agent defensemen out there, like Sami Vatanen and Travis Hamannick. So expect a lot of these guys to get signed as the season kind of ramps up. We are heading towards training camps, and it's very exciting. But that does it for today's video. I appreciate you guys watching till the end. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you guys later. Bye for now.